Hi, it's Slater, aka Science Toymaker. Some people want to do everything themselves, even cut their own foam for walk-along gliders. And that's what this video is about, cutting your own foam for walk-along gliders. Walk-along gliders are so efficient that you can surf them on a wave of air, similar to the way that large birds can soar on updrafts of wind. You can get thin sheets of foam cut on a robotic CNC hot wire cutter from sciencetoymaker.org. Or you can hot wire cut your own foam sheets from scratch with an electrically heated nichrome wire using recycled packaging foam and a common car battery charger. Everybody wants to use familiar paper at first, but thin sheets of common expanded polystyrene or EPS foam are many times lighter and stronger than paper. EPS is the white foam made from spheres or beads that's widely used in insulation and disposable packaging. Let's compare paper to EPS foam. 10 sheets of printer paper, cut to the standard size I use for gliders, are over 16 grams. 10 sheets of EPS foam only weigh two grams. Printer paper is eight times heavier and still not stiff enough to keep from bending too much. You can also see it by dropping a piece of paper and a piece of foam side by side. The Science Toymaker kit allows you to heat nichrome wire, the same kind of wire that you see in a toaster, both to rough cut blocks of recycled foam and then slice very precise sheets. The kit supplies several difficult to find items, including nichrome wires, bronze threaded and machined parts that enable the precision, while you supply the bulky but easy to find locally things, a flat board, threaded rod from the hardware store, a 12 volt car battery charger. The sparks look scary, but you cannot get a shock from 12 volts unless you stick your tongue on the wires. You rough cut blocks of foam with the thick nichrome wire. Then you fine cut the foam into precise sheets with threaded notched bronze L pieces and the fine nichrome wire. You fine tune the thickness by turning the L's in or out. Cut the piece of threaded rod in half and drill the holes for them in the board. Slant the drill a bit away from the board Otherwise, the rods tend to lean in. Having the rods stick out like this is dangerous. At the very least, you should put something on top to protect against accidentally getting speared. I just bend them over, but don't bend so tightly that they break. Thread the rods in until they're sturdy. Cut a piece of 30 gauge, that's the thicker nichrome wire. Twist the ends onto rubber bands so that the rubber bands are always stretched when strung on the rods. Hot wire cutting releases irritating smoke. You could do the cutting on top of your stove if the fan discharges outside. Or you could cut in a garage with a big open door. And remember that the foam has to be completely dry. The clamps of the car battery charger are too big, so attach the smaller alligator clips. Then simply clip onto the far ends of the nichrome wire, not too close to each other. If you need to, you can control how hot the wire gets by moving the alligator clips closer to each other. But when the wire glows orange, it's much too hot and can break. Measure where you want to make the cut and make sure the foam is flat on the board as you cut. It's that simple. I cut my blocks to about 10 centimeters by 22 centimeters for both small mosquito gliders and double big mama bug gliders. Cutting the actual foam sheets for gliders requires more precision and a finer wire. Drill two holes for the bronze L's to thread into. If any wood fibers stick up, Scratch them with a fingernail until they're flat. Screw in the L's until the groove is close to the board. Cut a piece of the thinner 38 gauge nichrome wire. Twist the ends onto rubber bands at least five turns so it doesn't come off. 
the nichrome wire will bend around the bronze L's at about a 45 degree angle and the rubber bands will hook onto wood screws. Hold the wire this way and the rubber bands stretched about halfway and try to guess where the wood screws should go. If it's not the right amount of tension, you can reposition the wood screws. Push the wire into the L grooves. Notice that when you rotate the L, it lowers or raises the wire very precisely. As the starting point, screw the bronze L in until the nichrome wire just barely touches the board on both sides. Then screw the L's out exactly one turn. When you adjust to cut thicker or thinner, turn both sides the same amount. I'm gonna start with the worst stuff, molded packaging foam. It's usually so hard it cuts slowly and it's heavy as foams go. It looks like you might get some good flat sheets from it, but there's so many voids that you won't get much. Yet as bad as this stuff is, it's easy to find and it's still many times better than the best paper. I hook up the alligator clips to the L's and try cutting a slice. The first one or two cuts are never good. Push gently so as not to deflect the wire a whole lot. Heavy foam is a little wavy, but it'll work. Here I'm gonna try a lighter foam. Notice how it's cutting faster, but it's cutting a little too thin now. So let's turn both bronze L's one quarter turn out. With lightweight foams, I raise the wire a little. You decide what thickness to make the foam. Too thick is too heavy. Too thin isn't strong enough. A good slice has some flex, but not too much. You'll get a feel for it. You can't measure the thickness of a sheet with a ruler, and a dial gauge like this is expensive. You might not need to know the numeric measure, but if you want to know, cut 10 squares and stack them together. If 10 sheets stacked together measure 6 millimeters, then one sheet is one tenth of that, 0.6 or 6 tenths of a millimeter. I've already mentioned why I don't use molded packaging foam anymore, but it will work in a pinch. The white sheet sold as building insulation can be good, but if it has recycled content, it can cause distortions when the wire hits impurities. The colored blue or pink insulation has not worked for me because it's too heavy. For a long time, I used discarded shipping boxes from the seafood department of grocery stores. However, these boxes are made strong and impermeable, so the foam is heavy and slow cutting. Eventually, I discovered the discarded packaging from a furniture and appliance store. There were nice big pieces, and then I stumbled upon some foam from China that was much lighter than anything I'd ever seen before. At 6 kilograms per cubic meter density, it's only four times more dense than air. This so-called Time Warp Asia foam is a very small part of the waste stream, but if you can make connections with a conscientious furniture appliance place, you might find it. In my experience, only the white bead foams work. People do make gliders out of disposable foam plates, egg cartons, meat and produce trays, but that foam is dense even when sliced thin. Knowing the density of foam is helpful. You weigh the foam block and multiply the width, length, and height, dividing the former by the latter product. Once you have thin sheets of foam, anybody can cut and fold them into walk-along gliders, so you can practice a kind of aeronautical alchemy transforming scraps of packaging foam into gossamer flyers that soar like birds. 